Hey everyone! If you don't know me, my name's Anjali and I'm a computer science student at the University of Waterloo. Now today, I'm going to be taking you all down through memory lane, hence my pajamas and my cup of coffee here. And I'm going to be talking about how I survived the IB. Oh, and I made a new intro. Check it out. My darling, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Now, before we actually get into the main parts of this video, we're just going to talk a little bit about what IB is for those newcomers here who are just about to step their little feet into the cold waters of IB. So IB stands for the International Baccalaureate Program. And basically, you get marked from levels between one to seven, where one is not good, and seven is the best. So you have basically two categories of courses. You have SL courses and you have HL courses. SL stands for standard level and you cover content basically in grade 11 and 12. Whereas HL stands for higher level and you cover content that includes university content along with grade 11 and 12. Now, if you're in the IB program, you're also super lucky because you get to do 150 CAS hours. Yay. CAS stands for Community Activity and Service. And it's basically like volunteer hour, volunteering hours, but you have to do tons and tons and tons of reflections. Finally, the last two parts really of IB are TOK and the EE. So TOK is kind of like a philosophy course and the EE is an extended essay where you write a 4,000 word essay on a topic that interests you. So that's what IB is in a nutshell. How I found IB. To be honest, I did find it like a roller coaster, and I know that's a really basic answer right now, but it's true. I remember in the first few days of IB, I just thought I couldn't get through the program. And I would be super anxious about tests and exams, and I would be on my computer longer than usual. So all of that was a really hard adjustment for me. Not to mention that your marks actually depend on the marks of your peers. And so that itself created a whole toxic environment, which again was really hard for me to deal with because you don't really see that in a regular school environment. And so because of that, it was a really hard adjustment just getting into the IB program. But um, I believe that you do create your own little like tight knit friends. And I think it's because of IB, I have such amazing friends now. And honestly, in terms of workload, yes, it's a lot, but IB will never throw something at you that you can't handle. Like for example, um, I forgot to mention this, but in subjects you have IAs. And so usually people get so stressed out because they think you have to create some whole research on your own, but no, you're only what, 15, 16, they don't expect you to do that. And so it's really important to like take that mentality, just control it and just really see what's being asked of you. And I think once I got more calm and once I really learned how to manage my time, I was able to understand the IB program and get the 42 out of 45 points I did. And speaking of that, let's just transition into how I got those points and how that may help you. One of the main reasons I got 42 out of 45 is because I knew what was expected of me from each course, from each assignment, and from each IA. And that's something that a lot of people do ignore. 
So before I started an IA or before I started an assignment, I would always analyze the rubric. I would understand what was expected of me to get a certain mark. And not only that, but there's also IB guides for each subject. And so I would read through them, read how they are marking the IA or whatever other projects are required for me to complete that course. And I think that really benefited me because it was kind of clear in the rubric what I needed to do to get that certain level. And I think that everyone should do that as well. And not only that, but the main, main, main reason I got this mark is because of all the resources that are available to all IB students online. There are past papers, like past exams from every single year for every single subject out there. And that really helped me because if you think about it, your teachers are preparing you for the IB exams and the IB exams are always really similar. And so teachers always take questions from past papers, maybe rewire them a little bit and just put them on tests. And so when I practiced all these questions online, all of this was wired in my brain. And so if I saw a similar question, I knew what to do. And so that is very important. All those past papers and all those resources, they're out there and they're there for everyone to use. In fact, let's just look at some resources right now. Okay, so here is the IB Discord, one of the many resources that I used. And I really use this to ask questions about questions. And everyone here is very nice. They're all here to help. There's other IB students or people from university here. Um, helping and so it was a really nice community just go and ask for questions and get answers right away uh, along with the IB discord the really big resource that was a complete lifesaver for me was um, the IB document or the IB redditor page which has every single past paper for every single subject from every single year on it not only that, but it has um, textbooks for every single subject along with the question bank. And so this was really, really helpful for me. So like, for example, you can see that you can either choose past papers categorized by subject or year. I usually chose year and then I would choose my subject. And um, when I was actually preparing for exams, I would go through each year and just see how far I could go um, while preparing. So this was really, really helpful. As I said, the questions really help you to be, help you prepare for the exam. Along with this, there's also another resource called ExamMate. Again, um, it's just a bunch of past paper questions, but it really helps you sort out maybe like what topic you're being tested on. And so you can search um, uh, questions for that topic. And so ExamMate really helped with that. Um, along with that, near the end, so when exams are actually coming up, I paid for Revision Village and um, Revision Village is a site that um, creates IB questions and posts them and there's like different challenges on it and they also post like predicted papers of what they think the next year's exam would look like and so I paid for it during the last month of when um, IB exams were about to start which really really helped as well so go on pay for it if you want to it's it's really really helpful i would totally recommend revision village finally the last resource i used really for sl math was archive and so here again you can see that different questions are sorted based on topics and um this really helped as well when we had a test i would just go through every single question on this topic and it would make me more um, more prepared. So yeah, these were a bunch of resources that I use. There's probably way more online. Just search them up and you'll find many, many, many resources. But these were the resources that were like a game changer for me. So finally, before we just wrap up this little section about how I got 42 out of 45, I really just want to say two more things is that I know that the IB program is hard and there may be like there will be times where you get stuck on questions, but you need to take that opportunity to talk to your teachers, ask them questions. They're there getting paid because 
They want to help you. They're there to help you. And so you need to take that initiative to go and ask questions, even though it may seem daunting or scary, just go because it will really, really help. You have to realize that all the content is like building off of each other. So if you're stuck on one place, you're probably going to be stuck on some other places. So it's really, really important that you clear those misconceptions that you have early. And finally, just make sure you create a schedule for yourself. I know this is probably an overlooked tip, but it's really helpful. Make a schedule, set out your deadlines because it's really easy to get carried away. Oh, and do not procrastinate. Like you will probably procrastinate, but level it down and do not procrastinate on work by doing other work. That is also not okay. I know because I did it. Okay, little stretch, but was IB worth it? Now, I know IB is not for everyone, but personally for me, I think IB was worth it. And this is why. It was worth it because the conversions really helped me. As you saw in my previous video, I listed down all my grades and a lot of people were like, how did you get those grades? And I really think it's because of the IB program, because of how rigorously they teach you the content. It was like wired in my brain. I knew what to do. And the conversions also really helped. So I think um, because of that, IB really benefited me. Not only that, but this is true. It really helps you time manage. When I just stepped into university, a lot was thrown at me, especially because it was online. Like every single assignment, every single deadline was given to me on one day. And I was very anxious about that. But because I've done this before in IB, I know how to schedule my time, my deadlines, my assignments. I knew what to do and I was able to manage it much, much better. And I think IB gave me those skills to be able to do that. And then finally, another reason, I know it'll sound surprising, but CAS actually really helped me. It motivated me to try new things. I did mention in my previous video that I founded a nonprofit organization and it's because of CAS I did that. Um, I needed um, community um, and service hours and so I kept thinking about what I could do and that came up to me and that's why I did it. And then I also used that project for DECA and it got me to international so I just think it's because of IB I could do that and again it really helped me. Now, these were like the benefits of joining IB and there's always um, like cons. One of the cons was really that I did rely a lot on past paper questions for me to understand content. And so when I went into university, those aren't really available to you. They don't give you like a bunch of practice questions or question banks. And because I was so reliant on that, it was really hard for me to understand the content that was given. And so I believe that was a major con for me from transitioning from IB, from high school IB to like university. And finally, the last thing I would say was like a really big con is that you don't have the liberty or freedom to explore different courses. You have six, eight, um, six courses you can really do, HL and SL courses, and they're very limited in terms of what your school has to offer. And so I wasn't able to explore different courses such as computer science because my school didn't offer it. I wasn't able to explore um, other courses such as law or other electives because it just did not have that space. I had to finish um, those IB subjects. And so I think that not having that liberty to explore different subjects and explore different careers was one other thing that I uh, think was a very big con. Okay guys, so we have reached the end of the video. I really hope it helped you in any way or any form. And just remember that if you're going through the IB program right now and if you're struggling, don't worry, we've all been there. You can always reach out to me if you need anything and there's a bunch of support groups out there. So that's that. And uh, if you did like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. 
and I'll see you next time. Bye!